go. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. We're going to give everybody a few minutes to hop on. So glad you guys are joining us tonight. Yes. Hello, everybody. We'll introduce ourselves in just a minute, but we're going to give just a little bit of time. Hope you're enjoying our beautiful beach scenes in the background. <laughs> I, even, I even went a little bit, you know, tropical-ish. I like evening. it. I like it, Natalie. I, I, orange is about as good as I could get. That's my summer. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Just give a couple more minutes, a couple more. We'll go to 602 and then we're going to start. That sounds good to me. You know, I, I'm going to want you to, to begin, Janet, by, you know, pronouncing those, those two adjectives that okay. are describing. Well, okay. Well, that's fair. That's fair. All right. Well, it, just because you said that, welcome to IDA's Summer Conversations, everybody. I apparently am Jovial Janet Street, and I have with <laughs> me as my guest, uh, Novaturiant Natalie Felix, uh, and uh, that works. this is this is a, a really we're just going to be chatting and um, because we both love so much the English language and we don't think it's as crazy you know once we started studying it as we used to. So um, you know I, I put the definitions down here at the bottom in case you're wondering um, that jovial of course means cheerful and friendly. And uh, Novaturian, desiring new changes. So Natalie mm -hmm. is one of those fabulous people who's open to new changes, uh, which we love. Um, Natalie, uh, thank you for being here so much. Natalie is a fellow with the uh, Orton Gillingham Association um, Academy. And uh, she is also, has trained many, many, many people how to use Orton Gillingham, specifically at the Swift School and Sage School, but also at many other schools. So we feel very lucky to have her um, here with us tonight. I am, my name is Janet Street. I am a board member with um, IDA Georgia. I'm also a fellow with the Orton Gillingham Academy and also do training. So without further ado, I think I'll just go ahead and show our first slide. Yeah. And, I uh, love that. So I, I, I just, you know, Janet and I uh, became, um, you know, colleagues initially, but friends, um, you know, turning out to be friends with this, this sort of love of words um, and the, the conversations we are having about um, English. And, you know, I, I am scared to say or scared to admit that I used to say English was crazy. I even used to have that hanging in my classroom, but um, I now don't believe that to be a, a fact. And um, Janet and I really enjoy having these conversations um, just about everything words. So I just kind of wanted to jump in and, and comment on that. She's like my kindred spirit. Yeah. Well, I mean, along those lines, we thought we'd start with how hot it is outside. So the dog days of summer and, and Natalie's going to tell us a little bit about this the just a smidge of morphology going on here a little smidge of morphology okay so excellent so it is the dog days of summer um which obviously is an idiom to describe how really hot it is outside right now um but you know that word thermometer where our thermometer the temperature is really going up that's actually made up of two um, two morphemes, two Greek morphemes, and we call them combining forms. Um, and each of those morphemes carry equal meaning. So when we look at therm, well, it means heat, and then meter, meaning measure. Well, you know, what does the thermometer do? But it measures the heat, which is certainly the case right now, or perhaps the lack there of heat, right? So, you know, a little bit of morphology to kind of help us understand the meaning of words or unlock 
the meaning of words, which is really quite fun. Well, and I see that little O in the middle. Tell us about that O. Oh, that O, oh, that O. Oh. Okay. So, you know, we have a lot of these little pieces in um, uh, morphemes or uh, these combining forms. And so we have therm, right, which means heat. Then we have meter, which means meter. Well, what on earth is that O there for? Okay. Well, that is called a connecting vowel letter. It does not carry any meaning. And the only reason the O is there is to bring those two other morphemes together um, uh, to create a new word that we can all understand. Um, and here's a, a really fancy, it's a fancy word. Um, it's called, it's all about euphony, right? And it's all about making things easier to say so that they sound better. There you go. I love that. And I love that word euphony because it has fun meaning sound and eu meaning good like good sound that good euphony good sound. sound yeah <laughs> exactly when you think about your phone well your phone is all about sound well you know we want some good euphony going on here some nice easy sound on your ear okay and then you you were playing with some other um interesting things at the bottom of the slide here tell us about those hmm well you know, I knew our theme for tonight was, you know, kind of a lighthearted theme. And uh, of course, I connected right away to the fact that it was, it's the dog days of sun, summer, which we know means that it's really hot out. So I, I literally just searched um, idioms that have to do with summer. And because I thought that's a really fun way to play around with language. Um, it's a great way to play around with your kids at home. Um because idioms, they carry meaning, but it's not a literal, you know, translation, of course, right? Um, so what do we mean when we're feeling the heat, right? Well, it doesn't necessarily mean we're feeling the hot temperature, but we're definitely feeling that pressure, right, or stressed out. Um, what if you're hot under the collar? Janet, have you ever been hot under the collar? Oh, yeah, once or twice, once or once twice. That's As a it. mother, mostly. <laughs> exactly. Well, we are definitely sweating it out this evening, right? We're working hard having this conversation. Certainly, we're not worrying about it, though. I don't know. You look like you're not breaking a sweat, Natalie. No, I'm not breaking a sweat. I have my <laughs> nice, my nice share. Yeah. So, you know, idioms are a very fun way to play around with language um, and not only understanding what they mean in today's English, right? But how did they come to mean what they mean in English, right? So there's lots of great resources out there that you can, um, you know, where did uh, It's Raining Cats and Dogs come from? Hmm, I wonder, yeah. right? So Noticing and asking these questions, well, you know, how did these things come to mean what they mean in English today? I love it. Just the okay. fun aspect. All I'm right. gonna I'm gonna go to our next slide, Natalie. All right. I am. Okay. So uh -huh. this is basically what we are, right? We are logo <laughs> files, right? We uh, another word for word nerds, but it's kind of fun to see all these different definitions or all these different um synonyms, synonyms really yeah yeah for what we are and file meaning love of right so um so, so fun to see all these different uh explanations for what we are but i'm going to skip this one out okay well this is can a can really I just pop that? Oh, can I pop yes that? please 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 because i mean even among this little list i kind of laugh and i kind of giggle and i'm like Okay, which one? Okay, I always identify myself as a word nerd, right? Because that's fun, right? Well, word lover, word buff. Wow, how fun is that? Mm -hmm. A lexical enthusiast, right? So, you know, each of these synonyms, right? They they sort of mean the same thing, but they they certain they have different connotations, right? They have you know different shades of meaning, right? Which is the cool thing about uh, synonyms shades of meaning so exactly i love yeah. it i like verbivore i hadn't heard that one before i had to look that one up i'm like what on earth <laughs> verbivore okay yeah uh, okay 
this is a, such an interesting concept um, that there is emphasis on different words in a sentence and in different syllables in a word. So tell us what this is all about. Okay, so we're going to unpack this a little bit um, together um, as, a, as a group here this evening, but we're going to unpack it in a couple different levels. So English um, is what we call a stress-timed language. It's an accent, uh, an accented language, meaning various words in sentences carry more stress all the way down to the word level, right? Individual words can have stressed or accented syllables or unstressed or unaccented syllables. And that's a really important concept for people to understand um, and for children to understand. And this here again, this is another fun thing that you know, when you're bored around the, the, the summer table, trying to find something fun to do, well, these kind of things are all over the internet. So we're gonna start at the sentence level, kind of the, the higher in the clouds place before we go down to the word level, all right? And you're gonna get a chance to play along with this. But what I want you to notice, we have three sentences here, right? They all say he, and then is, and then sick. But the cool thing about it is, depending on how we accent the word in the sentence is going to change, literally change the meaning of the sentence. You're going to be really thankful that you were raised in an, as, as an English speaker because folks who are English language learners, these type things are so hard to um, understand and recognize. So we're going to demonstrate here for you. Um, Janet, I, I believe we were saying we were going to toggle back and forth with this one. I'm going to start with the first one. So I'm going to say the first sentence, and I'm going to emphasize that first word. And Janet, you're going to tell me what that sentence means, okay? I'm ready. Here we go. He is sick. She is not sick. So it's he is sick and somebody else isn't sick. Right. Okay, interesting. All right, you try the second one. He is sick. Well, he's not faking it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you better not send them to school. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or you're going to feel bad. All right, we're going to try the second one or the third one. Here we go. He is sick. What do you think? Well, you know what? I'm thinking like a teenager right now. And I'm thinking that means he's really cool. Ooh. Because you know what? Sick has, oh, we're, we're jumping ahead into multiple meanings. But how about that? That if, I, I, you know, <laughs> I did. I just went a little bit crazy. Yeah. So you used a different sense and meaning for that word. And because you were emphasizing sick, you know, he is sick. I was sick. I'm using my my tone and my, you know, all of that kind of stuff. What if I was actually talking about being physically sick? And I said, he is sick. What would I mean, it mean then? I mean, he's not just a little sick. He's He's got the serious crud. He's got the serious crud. And, you know, he may not be going to school for at least a week. All right. Doctor, doctor's note to come back. Yeah, so... I, I love how you brought in that other piece. And, you know, just to be clear, just because they're little, and I know this comes up later. Oh, you know what? I'm not even going to hold on. We have this little word here that's got like a couple different meanings, right? Um, working with kids on all of those multiple meetings uh, is, is really an important thing to be playing around with. So, Janet, what's up next? Well, so I, you could play around with this with the sentence, I never said he ate your chocolate, right? You could say, I never said he ate your chocolate. I never said he ate your chocolate. I never said he ate your chocolate, right? And each one of those means it's something different. So play with that with your students or with your children, one or the other. It's good stuff. Um, all right. Now, this is a super interesting thing to think about that accent. So, so that was within a sentence, we accent a word, but also within a word, we accent a syllable. And sometimes the accent 
can change the part of speech. So tell us about dessert and dessert. I, this is, these are actually clip slides from some lessons that um, actually delivered with some students to demonstrate the fact that we can have these words that are spelled exactly the same, okay? D-E-S-E-R-T, but if you accent or stress either the first syllable or the second syllable, the meaning of the word completely changes, okay? And we're gonna come to see and we're gonna come to notice that this has an awful lot to do with whether the word or the letters, D-E-S-E-R-T, are playing the part of a noun or are they functioning as a noun? Or are they playing the part of a verb or functioning as a verb in a sentence? So let's take a look at this very first example. You'll notice that the DES is highlighted in yellow and there's this little accent mark that's going, going over that very first syllable. What that's telling me is that first syllable is getting the stress, okay? So we're gonna hear a nice clear vowel sound in that fir first syllable. All right, so I have a little picture clue there to, to help us know which word this one is gonna be, but the word is desert, okay, desert. Now I'm gonna kind of do a little punching action here. I'm gonna punch that stress syllable, all right? You can punch along at home with me if you want. Janet, punch along with me, okay? Here we go, desert, okay. desert, all right? Well. We all know what a desert is, right? It's that place where, well, it's kind of like it is outside right now, right? It's like a desert outside. It's so hot. There's no rain. Um, and, but if we're comparing the same letters, but accent a different syllable, all right, it completely changes the word, all right? And the word that it's going to change to now is dessert. Now, what? Wait, did I say that? Did I even say that right? You know, sometimes you, you say these things and it doesn't even sound right. Yeah, I'm gonna desert you, right? So watch me, watch me punch the stress the stress syllable here. So I'm gonna kind of pull my screen down here. I'm gonna retract the unaccented syllable. Desert, right? I'm gonna desert you. Look, that picture is even showing that that woman is going to desert that man. I wonder what he did. I think they well, both deserted the desert. That's what I think. I think they did too. And, and you know, and how do you know which, which is which? Like, so there's this little hint, right? Um, so for um, desert, right? Add the to help it make sense, right? The desert is very hot. But if I want to use it as a verb, well, maybe I'm going to add the word to, right? So she is going to desert him, right? which both of these words are not to be confused with what, Janet? Dessert. <laughs> the thing that you want two helpings of, which is why it has two S's in the middle and not just one. At least I do. Exactly. All right, so here are some other examples of words that fall into this exact same pattern with the noun having the first syllable accented and the verb having the second syllable accented. And um, just an interesting thing you may or may not notice here is that these all are um, have uh, prefixes and Latin roots, which is just kind of fun. Um, some of these are, are twin bases, right? Duct and deuce. So just kind of interesting that we can, uh, for instance, I can um, conduct myself with the very best conduct. Right? That seems to be a little bit related there. I think it is. I think they are, right? Um, I like the one on the bottom where the judge might say, uh, we will recess now. We will come back from our recess in 20 minutes. So yeah, you, depending you, on which syllable you stress, it changes It changes the word. I, that's right. I, I, I like um, subject versus subject, right? <laughs> yeah. I gonna, I'm going to be subjected 
to some very hot weather here until I fly north on Friday. <laughs> well, um, I know that where I am, there are many farmers and they are producing a lot of produce right now. Love that. Love that. Um, okay, you get so the these, idea. These were great examples, Janet. Um, I know at the beginning of this webinar, I was commenting that I used to, I used to literally have hung on my, my wall in one of my classrooms, English is crazy. And these were the kind of things that I had the children playing around with, right? And, and that would have a question, you know, up on the wall and they would have to um, kind of notice these two words are spelled the same, but they mean something different. And they had to kind of discover that. So it's kind of fun. It is fun. And it's fascinating. All right, boy, here is an interesting concept that, that there are these two and three letter words. Tell us about this one. This was um, a really big aha moment for me in my, my journey of kind of understanding spellings of certain certain categories of words. So in English, we, we have these two categories of, of words. One is content words, right? Those are the words, um, you know, in our phrases and sentences that carry meaning, right? They're the nouns, the verbs, the adjectives, and the adverbs. So they carry that the meaning within what we're reading and what we're spelling. Well, then we have this other category of words called function words, right? Um, you know, prepositions, conjunctions, you know, those little itty bitty words um, that are kind of like the glue that glue together all of these content words. Um, and it was a real aha moment for me when I, and I didn't notice this myself, by the way, I didn't notice this myself. Somebody had to point it out. See, we often know things, but we don't know that we don't that we know it, right? So here's an example, a little function word in, right? Well, I went in the store. Well, you know, you can't really describe in, right, by itself. But now look at the the uh, kind of the counterpart that also says in, I-N-N. -N. Well, you can kind of picture what does an, what is an in, a, a place that people stay, right? And I have to I have to laugh when when you know I was putting together this little list of content and function words. I did not put the but but on this list. <laughs> That's my fault. Sorry. <laughs> but it, it fits perfectly with this pattern that we're talking about, right? Well, um, sort of. It's three and four, but it's still the same concept. It is the same concept. You know, be like I am going to be very happy on Friday when I get on the airplane, right? But not if there's a B on the air. You know, so it, it helps explain spellings to children. Well, how did it get this way? How 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 did did somebody along the way just decide that these function words were okay to be small and these content words had to have at least three letters? Uh, that's a really good question. That is the answer is yes. Yeah, I, I am sure. I'm not sure who it was. Um, but you know the thing that I, I like about what, what you just did, Janet, is that you asked the question, right? You asked the question, why, why is it this way, right? And oftentimes, um, the, there's actual, actual uh, beauty in just being freely able to ask that question, right? You might not know the answer to the question, but know that there is a there is a reason. We might not just know it, but yeah, I'm somewhere along the line. Um, somebody I don't know who it was. And it's probably a different person for all of these words. <laughs> well, and and the interesting thing is that you know there was a time when when spelling was not a settled matter. Um, Shakespeare spelled his name two different ways in his will. And so it wasn't until the people who wrote the dictionaries came along and decided on particular spellings that any of this was really kind of decided. And so, um, you know, that, then you start thinking, well, why does the word egg, for instance, have three letters? Like, why couldn't it just be E-G? That would still say egg. Yeah, yeah sure could. Because it's a noun. It's a content word. We're not going to let it get away with being small. It's got to have some more substance. 
It absolutely does. You know, and, and we were talking about the word add, right? Well, what is what does it mean if you add something together, right? Well, that there's your verb, right? But I know somebody out there is saying, what about a D, right? It that that that's that's got a little bit of meaning. What do you think about that one, Janet? Where's ad come from? I think it's a clip. I think it's a clip. <laughs> it was clipped off of advertisement. The advertisement, yeah. So, you know, clip of that bigger, you know, that bigger meaning. Yeah, so, so cool. Very cool. Okay, let's see what else we have in store here. Oh my gosh, here we get to the polysemy, which is a word that I love. I love that word too. And before we got on here tonight, I had to kind of practice saying it in my head in case I had to, you know, I'm glad you pronounced it. <laughs> well, yeah, it's hard to know. I mean, you might think po polysemy or something, but. Um, how do you know how to pronounce a word, Janet? Well, um, there are accenting rules. Oh, there are accenting rules too. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, and I often say this to people, how do you know how to say, you know, how do you know how to pronounce a word or how, you, and you know, my, my comeback to that is always the, the speakers of the language determine how it's pronounced. Right. Right. But there are so many patterns, which, which is interesting. Um, and, and when you, if I were to say, if I were put to put the emphasis on the wrong syllable, it sounds like a foreign language, right? It, it does doesn't sound like, sound like English. It doesn't sound like English. Well, I'm looking at this fantastic word and, and the morphemes up there that kind of give us a clue as to what what we're going to be talking about here. You know, poly meaning many and, and the base S-E-M meaning. Well, you know, we can quite literally put those together. You know, these are words that have many different meanings but they're spelled the same so give us an example what's what's going on with this word run you know i saw somewhere online that the word the this little word r-u-n is considered to have um the most usages in the english language over 600 is that uh, i i know you're i, I know you out there are thinking what on earth are you serious? Um, but and, and Janet just put a couple examples up here. You can run in a race. You can run a business. Going to go on a grocery run. The fridge is running. What about, you know, I, I keep thinking of a whole a whole bunch of, of other ones. Like I have a run in my stocking. Exactly. If anybody even wears stockings anymore, right? Or my yeah. nose, my nose is what? running it, my nose is running um you know <laughs> again well, I, being, being an english speaker i'm so thankful right that this little itty bitty word run isn't going to cause me all of these problems um so here's a couple other examples that um janet put up on this slide um which I thought it'd be fun if you guys want to type into the chat. I've discovered that I cannot see the chat, but um, how many ways, like put, just put the word set in a sentence. Think yeah. of it as, think of it as a noun. Think of it as a verb. Think of it, it as maybe part of a verb phrase. Go ahead and type in, in the chat. Any any way you can think of using the word set, and I can see the chat. Oh, so good. Let's I see. Think what, I just discovered how I can also. Let's see what <laughs> pops up. I know y'all are are eating dinner at the same time, or maybe at the ball game. Let's see what we come up with. Anybody have any? Well, you know what? We came prepared for this moment because we did. We did. I we were thinking on. about it. Um, one thing we thought, by the way, as you're thinking of your sentences or, or your usages, is we noticed that the smaller a word is, the more multiple meanings it would have. Okay. So, um, okay. So my my sweet colleague here has texted me. She said, Janet, look in the Q&A. Look, don't look in the chat. Ah, oh, yes. 
Yes, set the table. Oh, yes, I love you. that. The chat is disabled. Okay, thank you for oh no. Thank okay. you so much. Um. So okay, chat is okay. I need a new set of dishes. Yeah, please set the plate down. I need to get my hair set. <gasps> that's a great <laughs> one. You know, that's kind of an old fashioned way of saying my mother used to go to the beauty parlor every Friday afternoon to my get her hair still does. set. Yes, I love that. Yeah, um, and isn't it fun how it changes over time? Ooh, listen to this one that Dina has given to us. Set you up on a date. Oh, good one. My right, let's do the same thing. Set. <laughs> let's do the same thing this time with go. How many ways can you come up with for go? How many? Oh, darn it. I keep trying to go ahead of myself there. See if I can. Um, I used one earlier. I am going to go to the store. Go home. Go for it. Go on a <laughs> date. Those are all excellent. Yeah. All right. Now, this is one of my favorites. How about bug? Notice how simple these words are. They're just little CVC words or even just CV words, right? Just so so little and simple and how complicated it could get for a young student because of all the meanings. <laughs> oh, Anne-Marie, are we really bugging you? <laughs> On your mark, get set, go. Oh, we have another go in there. Don't bug me. That's right. <laughs> bug out. I'm going to bug out. That's a good one. <laughs> I caught a bug. Uh-oh. Yikes. Right. <laughs> right now I'm hoping my computer doesn't have a bug. Well, well, we 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 love all your examples and we we had some of our own so you, we you can see them here. We can set a vase on the table. We can set fire to a house. I hope not. Uh somebody said set the temple to um dinner table. Set a mouse trap. A set of china. A theater set a set of odd numbers. You know, you think of it in that mathematical sense. Oh, I love that. Right? We are a go for takeoff. I'm starting on the bottom. Give it a go. Uh, the come and go of seasons. Uh, it could go at any minute, uh, et cetera. I'm looking under bug now. Ooh, kill that like bug. A go -go, like a go-go girl. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, uh, he caught the pickleball bug. Um the spy did bug the room. Oh, bug off. Love <laughs> it. I think that's kind of British, isn't it? I don't know. I don't Sounds know. Good. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. So this is another like really super cool concept that I never understood until, like you said, it was pointed out to me. And is this Faunus themes? I think it's, I think it's pronounced Faunus themes. Okay. And, you know, we didn't put the morphology up of this word, but we've already talked that, um, you know, phone, P-H-O-N-E, has to do with sound, right? Well, and then we can take a nice little guess. You know, we, we kind of already know what a theme is, right? So we can kind of translate this to this idea of a, a sound theme, right? that you may not even be aware that's out there, right? So these patterns, these spelling patterns that we have um, that have come into English are often linked in meaning. And I'm gonna go to my very um, favorite and very first one that I learned about, which is the third one down, words that begin with S-N, right? So when you think about snub and snout, and snicker and um, snobby. What is it if you are snobby? What is up in the air, right? But your nose, nose right? Your nose. So words, not all words, but many words that have that S-N have something to do with your nose. And um, the reason this was one of my favorites, it was the first one that I learned about this idea was because when I was growing up, um, I used to watch Sesame Street and the snuffle up was my favorite character. And he was this, you know, I don't know, woolly mammoth looking thing that had the big long snout. So anyway, snuffle up made complete sense. Or if you have the sniffles. Right. Okay. I'm yeah. not going to talk about the stuff that comes out of your nose because that's just a gross one. 
it is a gross one, but you know, it, it fits. <laughs> it fits. <laughs> so look at these other ones that are out there that are kind of fun. G, GL, kind of having this notion of, you know, shimmering, right? So when you think about glimmer and glisten and glowing, right? Um, even glass, right? Having kind of this, this notion of uh, shimmering. This was one that I, uh, I think Janet brought this one to the table, the S, the SL um, blend. Low kind friction. Of low, you know, friction, slide, slick, sled. And when we were talking about this uh, yesterday, I was like, well, what about slip, right? Yeah. Nothing, nothing was there to keep you from, you know, falling down. And, and the, one of my these, these last two, I think, have an added benefit. In the sense that oh. the first three, your 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 kids are going to be able to smell smell those, spell those, because they can hear the sounds. But, but look at these last two. You're talking about the W, aren't you? I'm thinking T W and W R. Yeah. So a lot of kids will have a hard time spelling the number two, T W O. They're going to say, "Here's going to be the question." Why is there a W in the word too? It makes no sense. And what are you going to say to them, Janet? But look at all the other things that have to do with the number two. We have twins and 12 and twinkle. A star goes on and off when it twinkles. And if you're between two things and there's so many other TWs that follow. Like tween, like if you're in between, you know, if adolescence and, you know, you're a between right exactly. kind of like between yeah um the wr is um you know really a what we call a silent letter team here in in english today right um and it's really kind of hard for spelling because when we you know when you spell ring or wrist or wrap all you hear is the the sound of the r but there's a w in there right that helps protect the meaning, but these words that begin with WR, these all come from old English, you know, have this notion of twisting, right? When you wring a towel, you know. Hey, you know what I just noticed? What? Look at the word twist. It goes in two directions. It's a TW word. <gasps> <laughs> this is how much fun English is. <laughs> this is like, that was a real live aha moment. Right. So that was way fun. Yeah. I would have never. And it was just because they were sitting right next to each other that you made that connection. I love that so much. Well, well um, and, and with the WR, it can really help because of homophones. Like, you know, this is a ring, yeah. but not the ring because this is, it's not really twisting and, and rap music is not spelled W R A P because you're not wrapping, you're not twisting paper around. Yeah. So it can really help uh, with meaning and spelling. Yeah. I have a whole book. If you're interested in, in this concept, here's a, here's a book I have. Oh, you can't see it. Tell us the name of it. The book is called SL is for sleaze, but SN is for sneeze. You, if you put it right in front of your face, we can see it. Of course, we'll miss your beautiful face. Oh, that didn't work at all. I take it back. Yeah. The meaning behind English consonant clusters. Yeah. So I actually have a book on it. I know so you're all great. surprised. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go on to our next one <clears throat> because we were talking about homophones. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have some, you know, very typical homophones that we see in English. Um, and you know, English evolved, right? You know, it's based on sound, but meaning really is going to trump when it comes to spelling, right? So if you look at the first example, heel versus heel, well, how on earth might we help kids know which one to spell with, right? Well, you know, H-E-E-L, the bottom of our foot, but heel with the sense of having to do with your health well, take a look at that little sentence there. Once you heal, you're in good health, right? So both of these words coming from the same word family 
are pronounced a little bit different, right? So the, you know, the cool thing about this is a little bit of a deeper dive, but you know, that EA uh, vowel team, you know, the reason we're using that spelling is because it has the ability to toggle or change between those two different sounds, right? So, you know, it's, it's the optimal spelling for that, that word family. Well, I, I like this next one too, because I know our students struggle so much with <clears throat> there, there, and there. Um, oh, yeah. And especially with these two there's. And if you can remember that the word here, like it's either here or it's there. Um, and where is it? Because that also has the word here in it. And of course, speaking of the word here, I can hear with my ear, which is E-A-R. So I know that the here that I do with my ear has well, E-A-R. Yeah, so this, this by the way, it, it is all by design, right? This isn't, this didn't just happen by happenstance, you know, here, there, and where, well, they all have have something to do with place, right? So that, that helps. Um, I really like the last one, loan versus loan, right? So if, if I had to ask you uh, the question, is the word one and loan, do you think they're in a related family somewhere, somehow? Yeah. What else is in that family? How about like, once? Once, and yeah. Only? And only. And, you know, if you went into the, the down the Greek road, you know, the U-N-E, like in uni, right? Like a uniform meaning one, right? So there's all of the these connections. And and here's another one, alone. Right. If you're alone, right, you are just one. You're just one. You're at one. All right. Let's see what other fun tricks we have for you. Oh, this is my favorite thing of all. So you know, we want to just leave you <clears throat> with the thought of staying curious because it's kind of like the, once you've been bit by the bug, there goes that word again. Oh um, my goodness. <laughs> you know, you just kind of need more and more. And, you know, there's something in your pocket right now. It's called um, Google. It's a phone. And all you have to do is type <laughs> into it, define, and then any word that you're curious about. And you'll notice that number two here, like my word that I was always curious about was biscuit. Like why in the world is biscuit spelled that way? So I typed in define biscuit. And then at the underneath the definitions or pictures or whatever it gives you, it'll have a little either a down arrow or a little see more. And so you can come over here and this is what it brings up. And it shows us the, the etymology, right? The, what, what was the origin of this word that you see is coming from Latin to old French and then it's got a very interesting description here. It says that it was um, twice cooked and it was so named because originally biscuits were cooked in a twofold process, first baked and then dried out in a slow oven so that they would keep. So bis from Latin and uh, cooker or coctus and then into French and then into English. And that's how we got biscuits. Wow. Fascinating. I, it, the, the stories are fascinating. Words and language, you know, it's it's not just studying grammar. Uh, one of the, my big aha moments about uh, becoming a word nerd <laughs> was this recognition that language is an expression of, you know, humanity and culture. And it's a way um, for people to understand the world. And um, being able to look back into how these words came into the English that we know today, well, it's a story of our history, right? So I used to always think I didn't like history, but wow, has that changed? So it's, I it's, agree. It's, it's exciting. Um, another site you could con uh, consider looking at is a, a site called Edom Online. Um, I don't know if I can, I don't think I can it's, type it's, that. In. It's it's a good one. I don't find it as user friendly. That one, the one that you showed is very user friendly for sure. Pretty user friendly. Um, I I don't know um if we have any time for Q and A or if it's even possible, but um, 
It sure has been fun. This has absolutely been fun. Let's see what we have. Oh, I'm seeing I'm seeing all these other comments in the question and answer. Let's see if I missed anything. I um, unfortunately can't see it. So I'm street. A... Oh yes, Caroline Derek from your your OG oh, training. Ooh. Yay! Hi, Caroline. Oh. <laughs> okay, Snooty, thank you for that glitter. Yep, love that one. Slope. That's good. It's a slippery slope. Maybe that's where oh, that. I like that. Slope. I like that. Between. Oh, wrangle. Wrangle's a good one for that WR. And wrestle. Um, yes, and wrestle, right? If you. What's, what's twisted if you're wrestling? Well, those bodies are all twisted, right? Um. Yeah, so that's uh, that's all. I've, I don't think I missed anything in the, in the Q and A in your comments, but thank you so much for um, popping your um, your suggestions and the the uses of those words. Um, we we could honestly sit here and chat all night about words. That's how nerdy we are. So <laughs> word no wait word lover. <laughs> thank you, Natalie. Thank you so much. This was you were a wealth of information, and thank you for spending your your summer night with us we appreciate it so much absolutely everybody have a fantastic summer and ask those questions and tune in next month because we're going to have another great session um with uh, uh matt carter about the screeners that um are going to be implemented in the coming year so um of course i'm blanking on the date but it's on the website so I good think it's I on my to... birthday it might be july 17th is that right? I don't well, know. Happy birthday. I it love might it. Be. Don't quote me. But I think it might be on my birthday. Thank you, everybody, for coming. <laughs>